first car to successfully challenge the M3 and the C-Class. It was the car that could translate Audi's all-wheel drive rally dominance into luxury sales. It was powerful enough to bring Audi back from the brink of bankruptcy. And just like Nolan, it has endured for over 25 years. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on one of my favorite cars, the Audi S4. And now a quick word from our sponsor. This episode of Up to Speed is brought to you by Epic Games. That's right, baby, Fortnite. You already know what it is. Hit the link in the description below and start playing for free. Where we dropping, boys? So. In 1965, Volkswagen resurrected the Audi badge after a two decades long absence in the car market. VW bought the company to use their factories to assemble Beetles, but Audi engineers had other plans. Behind the scenes, they were like, guys, Volkswagen wants us to build bugs. But we don't want to build the car of the people, the engineers. We want to engineer a better car. I know! We want to build a cool car that is sleek and fast and not round and weird. Then das is was we will do. Hans, you promise? Yes! I promise! So, as VW was prepping their plants for beetle production, Audi higher-ups decided that they'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. <gasps> and they started building the Audi without Volkswagen's knowledge. And you wanna guess what happened? Ah, uh, yes. It paid off? Yes! Oh, uh... VW loved the car and approved it for production. And how can you blame them? It looked great and had almost three times as much power as the Beetle. By 1972, Audi had established a solid reputation with a succession of sedans like the Audi 72, 75, 80, and Super 90. In 1984, the introduction of the all new Audi 5000 shot sales through the freaking roof. The aerodynamic luxury car increased profits for the company by 48% and Audi was on a roll. Just like me on New Year's. <laughs> but the optimism wouldn't last. Shortly after the 5000's debut, some owners started claiming that their cars had taken off at full throttle while their foot was planted on the brake. How could this be? What the heck is going on? Six deaths and 700 accidents later, Audi was swimming in lawsuits and the engineers didn't have any answers. They couldn't find anything wrong with the car. American news show 60 Minutes aired a damning report on the 5000, which included testimony from Audi owners who had experienced the unintended acceleration for themselves and interviews with Audi execs. Audi announced they would install brake shift interlock devices in every 5,000, which kept drivers from shifting without their foot on the brake. 60 Minutes conducted a test to see if the new feature worked, and to Audi's complete surprise, S functionert neat. But they got conned! One of the experts conducting the TV test had drilled a hole into the transmission and connected a bottle of compressed air that shifted the car from neutral into drive? What? What kind of crooked sorcery is this? The bad kind. The test was rigged, but audiences didn't know that and the damage was done. So what caused the acceleration? People were stepping on the gas when they thought it was the brake. What? <laughs> the 5000's brake pedal was smaller than people were used to. That's what she said. Or he said and it was a little closer to the gas pedal. So great, it wasn't their fault. They shouldn't have to pay anybody out, right? Well, they did anyway. And to make matters worse, BMW, Mercedes, and Lexus had all but destroyed Audi by the early 90s. The total number of Audis sold in the US dropped from 75,000 in 1984 to only 12,000 by 1991. At which point, the beleaguer, who that works with me thinks I can say that word? <laughs> At which point, the beleaguered 5,000 sedan was retired. Audi was down. 
To stay afloat, the company needed a life raft, a car that could reestablish their role as a leader in luxury performance. By 1991, a young American designer by the name of Jay Mays had made his way from Maysville, Oklahoma to Audi. And he brought with him a little thing called insight. He was like, guys, Americans are gonna want a car that looks like this. And while he wasn't the only designer to work on the car, his opinion mattered a lot because he was American. And Audi needed Americans to like their cars. Enter the Audi 100 C4. Mays reminded everybody that in the 80s, Audi had found racing glory with their Group B dominating Ur Quattro. But the production model Quattro Coupes weren't big sellers. Maybe if they tossed the same kind of performance recipe together in a more practical sedan body style, people would buy more of their cars. They were like, this guy might be American, but he wears glasses. And that means he's smart. Just like the Nike from America, let's do it. In 1991, Audi unveiled a high performance version of their venerable 100 C4 sedan, calling it the S4. It used the same 2.2 liter turbo inline five they relied on since 1985. Only its output was bumped way up to 227 horsepower in a sedan. That was unheard of in 1991. The S4 came standard with Audi's famous Quattro all wheel drive. And it was one of the quickest sedans of its time going zero to 60 in about six seconds. That beat the rear wheel drive only M3 which was still just an inline four making 192 horsepower. Then BMW was like, okay, we got a new M3. It's got a straight six and 282 horsepower. And then Audi was like, let's make an S4 plus model with a V8 and 278 horsepower. Audi was challenging the ultimate driving machine for compact luxury sedan supremacy, which is not a word I like to use when talking about German wars. While still an underdog in the car market, Audi started to find solid footing once again. The second generation S4 made its debut in 1997 with a modern new look and a drastically different power plant. A twin turbo, 2.7 liter, 30 valve V6 engine sent 261 horsepower to all four wheels with a six speed manual. And for the first time, you could get a five speed Tiptronic automatic. <laughs> That's lame. This awe-inspiring Audi you might know by another name. It's the B5 S4. The B5 S4 is, by Audi fanboy standards, the ultimate S4. Its power figures blew people away at the time. Over 250 horses in a luxury sedan. Are you nuts? All it took was a chip tune and bolt-ons to boost the power numbers out of the stratosphere. Even cooler was the B5 S4 Avant, a friggin' station wagon. In 2003, the third gen model S4 took no prisoners and roared in the market with a smooth but tough 4.2 liter, 40 valve V8 making a whopping 339 horsepower. Critics praise the snarl of the engine and the suspension that seemingly contradicts various laws of physics. The S4 was securing its place as a leader among kick-ass performance sedans. In 2005, Audi released its fourth gen S4, which was pretty much a light refresher on the previous model. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, am I right? Production of the fifth gen S4 began in 2008. In a bold statement, Audi replaced the previous V8 engine with a more compact and powerful three liter, 333 horsepower V6. This was Audi's first modern supercharged engine and it put the S4 in direct competition with the BMW 335i. The car reached zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds and maintained the S4's trademark cornering capabilities. The sixth and current gen S4 was officially introduced at the 2015 Frankfurt Motor Show. This single turbo luxury performance model has been described as a 354 horsepower rocket sled. 
Its sleek styling and smooth ride complete the perfect Audi picture and continue to make the Audi S4 a formidable opponent for other cars in its class. It is no exaggeration to say that the S4 helped save Audi from the brink. With a modern focus on technical innovation, safety, and played old kick your butt off, smash mouth performance, the S4 still puts fear into the hearts of its enemies and its drivers. It's understated, it's ferocious. It's the Audi S4. Thank you to Epic Games and Fortnite for sponsoring this episode of Up to Speed. You've probably heard of Fortnite, even my mom has. It's the free to play battle royale sensation that's already swept the nation. It's got 100 player PVP. That means player versus player player. It's got buildable structures that you can blow up and you can play with your friends in duos and squads and more. Also, you can ride on rockets and shopping carts. And did I mention it's free? Download Fortnite for free in the link in the description below. Who knows, you might see me get no scoped at Tilted Towers. Get Fortnite today. Yo, thanks for watching Up to Speed. We make these videos for you guys. I would not have a job if you didn't watch them. How about you click the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. You like my shirt? You like my hat? You wanna buy them? Go to shop.donut.media. You like turbos? Watch this episode of Science Garage. I love you.